Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to do a basic power edit, kind of like the ones that I do on my website. First, we double click the background layer, make it an actual layer, then we make two new layers, because that's how we're going to do the effects. Go into quick mask mode, select the brush, make it kind of soft, but big enough for the actual blast, since that's what we're going to work on first. Go ahead and select the shape. I just wanted to go for the kind of water droplet looking, just to be basic. Nothing too fancy. Normally these edits take about an hour or so, but so I'm showing you guys how to do the basics. I'll let you take it from here. Alright, go ahead and exit quick mask. And I'm just going to move it over to the side a little bit. There we go. I'm going to filter, render, clouds. Alright, and this is a very important thing. I deselect it. One important thing is white on black. That's one thing that you'll learn later. To, and then to fill that bottom part with that bottom layer with black, you do shift F5 merge the layers together with control E and then linear dodge that layer and then turns bright. And I'm going to duplicate the layers with control J and on the top layer I'm going to do filter stylize glowing edges and normally you can go one to two that those are the normal ones I do I barely do three brightness is normally all the way up smooth this is definitely good and after that we make that middle layer visible and then we're going to take the levels down a little bit that way it's not as bright so you can kind of see what you're doing Go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to take the smudge tool and we're going to smudge a couple sides around the edges to make it look like it's actually kind of moving away from my hand. That's kind of a realistic part. And then once you're pretty much finished with that, you go to that bottom layer and we take the dodge tool, make sure it's set on highlights, and um, we just go ahead and brighten up a couple areas that look like they need brightening. And then we also use the burn tool and we burn a couple areas that look like they look too bright. And merge the layers together. Now, one thing, this is how you colorize. You click the colors box, and bring saturation all the way up if you want, or you can bring it halfway down, doesn't matter. And then that's how you choose the color. But notice how the color isn't always there, how it's just kind of blue. Some people like to where you can actually see the detail inside, so you can dodge it a little bit more. And then you got, well, when you, when you colorize it, you got the whiteness inside, so it looks a little bit better. Alright, but we're not going to mess with that just yet because we're not finished. Next is the detail a little bit more from the hand since that's where it's coming from. So we're going to zoom in on my hand. And just like before, we're going to take a couple white dots this time instead of using clouds. And go ahead and pick the size. And we're, all we do, this is a basic thing. So those who are really good at smudging and stuff like that, this normally takes a while to get the hang of. But after a while of practicing, you kind of get it down. And this, this is how most people do their fire edits like this unless they take a stock image. But yeah, you start with the basic smudge and then you continue on from there. Sometimes it's not gonna look like flowy like this. It's Like I said, it's a skill that takes a while to get the hang of, but after a while it starts to look better and better unless you can go keep going back and forth, just keep editing it until it looks right. And then to be safe, and if you don't want to mess up what you already did, go ahead and make a new layer like I did there. That way when I smudge, it won't affect the ones underneath it. And then like before, just keep smudging and smudging and smudging. Alright, now we merge those two layers together, make that middle layer again. Pitch black with a shift F5, make sure it's selected black. And then merge those together, that's like important again, white on black. Linear dodge that. Do a couple of finishing touches, merge those two layers together. Alright, now here comes the fun part. Alright, we're going to duplicate that layer, and then we're going to take the square. This is just for me, just because sometimes I like to have certain parts brighter than the other. You can do it that way, or you can go ahead and dodge it if you want. Doesn't matter, but I'm going to make it blurry, so it kind of gives that glowy effect. Then we're going to merge those two together, and then we're going to colorize it. I click colorize, I bring the saturation all the way up just for kicks and then got blue. I like blue a lot, so a lot of people like blue. And now that's we're not done just yet. That's how you get the color. Now notice how it doesn't look exactly right. So we're gonna add a little bit more touches to it. Just to make it a little bit cooler. It's kind of amazing that some people spend so much time on Photoshop just to figure something like this out. But in the end, like you're watching this video, so I guess it pays off. Okay, now, one thing that's important is lighting. Alright, so after I do the finishing touches up, 
or touch up is. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to take the dodge tool. Notice how the lighting is right on my actual, on the actual picture. That's one important thing in photography. It's always the lighting, especially with pictures like this. So I'm going to go dodge tool. Make sure it's set on highlights. Midtones. You can do midtones, but that's only for certain dark areas that you can't really see anything, where it's like so dark it's black almost. But right now we're going to do highlights. And the special thing about highlights, as you can see, is it brightens areas up and it makes it look like there's light actually coming off my hand from the blast, etc., etc. So we're going to go ahead and do this. There we go. A couple areas. Now sometimes you might mess up. This is just half-assed, but normally you would kind of go in like this here and then change the brush size a little bit smaller. Well, here, this here I'm doing the eyes. But um, normally you can go in and bring the hardness up a little bit and then go a little bit closer to the edges. That way it won't be so fuzzy around the edges. Now we're going to select the color of a brush. And this is how we get the lighting color off it. Some people do it otherwise, I'll do it this way. And you select overlay, opacity, about 24, 23, somewhere around there. Like I said, overlay, and then all you do is just kind of color over. And it kind of gives that bluish effect from the blast. And go over as many times as you like until you feel comfortable with it. Another thing, notice how you see the edges around my hand. One way to fix that is the history brush. We're going to go in and we're going to delete a couple areas or make it look like there was. Sometimes people mess up with that because they already edited the background before they did that so it messes up but you can always go out and erase it or you can go back and redo it. If you get closer to the edges. Now we're going to set the burn tool and work with some shadows. Go ahead and darken a couple areas on the sides. Give me a shadow. Increase the brush size. You can do br you can do the burn tool a couple ways. There's midtones, which is all right, and then there's burn. Burn is a lot more intense than midtones, obviously, but it's pretty nice. All right, now I gotta do now is make a new la make a new layer. Add the borders. Shift F5. Make it all black. Same thing on the bottom. Add borders. Use the crop tool. Pick the size. Make sure the borders are about the same size. Push enter. And then you pretty much got yourself your basic picture. Oh yeah, and one important thing, the motion blur with the quick mask. To make it look like it's moving again. There we go. And then sh uh, control shift F, that's the fade it. So whatever you do, and you go fade it, and it kind of goes back. Now what a lot of photographers do is they go uh, image, adjustments, brightness and contrast, that's how you get the color. Now if you want to increase the color, you go to control U to open up the color, and don't click color eyes because that changes the whole picture. You can increase the color that way, bring it down a little bit, whatever. And there you're pretty much finished with your basic power edit. Good luck, enjoy this, have fun, and you can also go ahead and change the size if you want, put your own link, whatever. Enjoy.